It's never too early to put together your Heisman Top 10. I'm not going to be taking a look back and seeing how I did last season, but I'm guessing I was perfect on all my early predictions. I'm also kind of upset because although I didn't pick Jaden Daniels to win last year, I was on his hype train way before everyone else. After his freshman campaign at Arizona State, I made a video that offseason where I had him as my Heisman Dark Horse entering his sophomore year. So I guess I was technically right, but I was just about three years ahead of the game. As we sit here in early March, here's my way too early Heisman Top 10 for the 2024 college football season. Before we get to today's video, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn on those notifications if you're new to my channel. If you're watching this video, odds are are you love college football, and odds are you aren't subscribed to my channel, so make sure to subscribe to one of the best college football communities here on YouTube. Kicking off today's video as my number one pick for next year's Heisman is Georgia quarterback Carson Beck. I think he's the best quarterback returning to college football next year. In his first season as Georgia's starting QB, he quietly put together a really solid campaign that I think flew under the radar. Beck completed 72% of his passes and threw for just under 4,000 yards. He had 24 passing touchdowns with only 6 interceptions while also adding 4 touchdowns on the ground as well. Beck also put up these numbers in a lot of blowouts where he wasn't necessarily needed for a good portion of the fourth quarter. I think he's going to improve these numbers in 2024 and I think Georgia is going to be the best team in all of college football next year. Now, I'm not saying they're going to go undefeated, but if they're right in the playoff hunt next season, season and Beck is even better than he was this year, he'll at the very least be a finalist. If he's going to win, he'll probably need to light up the stat sheet a little more because there are some guys on this list who are going to put up some pretty good numbers next year. Speaking of those numbers, Dylan Gabriel might have his best season in 2024. Now, that's actually saying something considering he's already near the leaderboard in college football history when it comes to passing yards and passing touchdowns. He transferred to Oregon this offseason where he'll spend his final collegiate year at his third program. During his career, we've seen Gabriel post some great numbers. I mean, he has four seasons where he's thrown for at least 3,000 yards and four seasons with at least 25 passing touchdowns. This past season at Oklahoma, Gabriel completed a very nice 69% of his passes while throwing for a career high 3,600 yards. He also had 30 passing touchdowns with only six interceptions while also adding nearly 400 yards on the ground with 12 rushing scores. At Oregon, he'll be playing under the best offense of his career, which is kind of wild considering the numbers he's put up while at UCF and Oklahoma. We saw what Bo Nix was able to do with his career after he transferred to Oregon, and I think we can all expect Dylan Gabriel to have a very similar season. I'm really high on Arizona quarterback Noah Fafita for next year. He had a breakout season that nobody saw coming in 2023. Although he didn't begin the season as the Wildcats starting quarterback, he finished the year as one of the top quarterbacks in all of college football. Through the end of September, he had attempted only 8 passes. He made his first start against Washington on September 30th and didn't look back. In only 9 games, he threw for nearly 3,000 yards with 25 passing touchdowns. Had he played a full season and played 12 or 13 games, he likely would have thrown for 4,000 yards with 35 touchdowns. Well, he'll be the starting quarterback for next season, so we can probably expect him to post those numbers. This also pains me as an Arizona State fan, but I think Arizona is going to be really good next year. I think they can win the Big 12 and even be a playoff team. Man, I hate saying that. But if that's the case, and the Wildcats are playoff bound, it's probably because Noah Fafita had a great season, which means he'll be in the Heisman conversation. Another quarterback who jumped onto the scene this past year was Missouri quarterback Brady Cook. He wasn't really on anyone's radar entering last season. He had a breakout campaign in his fourth season with the Tigers. Cook threw for over 3,300 yards with 21 passing touchdowns. He also added 300 yards on the ground and had 8 rushing scores as well. Missouri is a team that's on the rise in the SEC and they could be a sneaky playoff threat in 2024. He'll definitely have to improve on those numbers, but the Tigers are returning a lot of talent next year, so I think he will. If they're in the playoff hunt and he can have a really solid campaign, he'll definitely be in the Heisman discussion. Jalen Milrow is back for another season with the Tide. How is this team going to look under Kalen DeBoer though? That remains to be seen. Milrow had a great season in 2023 
as he finished 6th in Heisman Trophy voting. Based on how the season started for him, that's actually pretty crazy to believe. It looks like he had lost his job early on, but he had quite the turnaround in the second half as he guided Alabama to the college football playoff. He finished the season with 2,800 passing yards and 23 passing touchdowns. He also added over 500 yards on the ground with 12 rushing scores as well. If he's able to post those numbers over a full season and Alabama looks solid under Kalen DeBoer, I think Jalen Milrow will once again finish top 10 in the Heisman voting. Before we get to the rest of today's top 10, don't forget to drop a like on this video. It helps share the video and my channel with more college football fans, plus it only takes a second to do. Jackson Dart is back for another season at Ole miss 2023 was a career year for him as he continues to get better each season last year for the rebels dart completed 65 percent of his passes while throwing for 3400 yards he had 23 passing touchdowns while also rushing for 400 yards and eight rushing scores He'll replicate those numbers at a minimum next season, so he'll need to have an even better campaign if he wants to put himself in the Heisman discussion. Now, it's certainly possible, and it's also possible that Ole Miss can be in the playoff discussion next year as well, which will increase his chances. A player that I'm really looking forward to seeing next season is Tennessee quarterback Nico Iamalieva. He was one of the top quarterbacks of his class, but we haven't really gotten to see him just yet. We got a little appetizer in his bowl game to end the year, and he looked the part. Against Iowa, he threw for 150 yards with a passing touchdown, while adding three touchdowns on the ground as well. Tennessee has had a couple of really good quarterbacks over the last couple of years, but he's likely going to be the best by far. If he's able to do what a lot of people are expecting out of him, he's going to have a huge season and could have the Vols as a potential playoff sleeper. Speaking of top recruits we finally get to see, Oklahoma quarterback Jackson Arnold will be the starting quarterback. He saw limited action all season, but we got to see him start the final game of the year for the Sooners. Oklahoma lost, but he threw for 360 yards with two passing touchdowns and 40 rushing yards against Arizona. I think he has a chance to be a really solid quarterback for the Sooners and put up some really good numbers. The only reason I'm not a little bit higher on him is because Oklahoma is moving to the SEC this year. If they were staying in the Big 12, they might be the favorites to win the conference, but things are going to be tough for him in the SEC. Quinn Ewers is next on the list, and I just don't know what to make of him. We've had a pretty large enough sample size of him so far in his career, and he just hasn't met his high expectations that came with him when he was a top recruit. Still, the talent is there, and Texas should be one of the top teams in all of college football next year. At least, I think so. The Longhorns are moving to the SEC, where their schedule is going to get a lot more difficult. They're also losing a lot of talent on their offense to the NFL Draft. So, with that said, I'm not quite certain how he's going to fare next season. He should be really good, and so should Texas, but we'll just have to wait and see. We're going to wrap up today's video with Colorado quarterback Shitter Sanders. Now, from a talent and numbers perspective, he should be a lot higher on this list. His issue is that he's on Colorado, who might not be a bold team next year. It's the reason he didn't get Heisman love this year, as Colorado finished the season with only four wins. Despite putting up great numbers, you have to be on a winner if you're going to make a push for the Heisman. In his first season with the Buffaloes, Sanders completed 69% of his passes while throwing for 3,200 yards. He had 27 passing touchdowns with only three interceptions and added four touchdowns on the ground. Considering he had about one second to operate behind the worst offensive line in the FBS, those numbers are actually pretty remarkable. He'll be lighting up the stat sheet once again in 2024, but if he wants to be in the Heisman discussion, Colorado is going to need to be competitive, and I don't know if they'll be able to be. Sure, the Buffaloes could win 6 or 7 games, but for Shadur Sanders to have a legitimate case, Colorado's probably going to have to win 9 games at a minimum. Well, that wraps it up for my way too early Heisman Top 10 for the 2024 college football season. Was there a player that was way too high on this list, or a player that was way too low, or a player I didn't even include at all? Whoever it is, let me know in the comment section down below. Before you leave, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn on those notifications if you're new to my channel. I'm posting college football videos all off season, so make sure to subscribe so you never miss a video. Also, don't forget to drop a like on this video as well. It helps out with that YouTube algorithm and helps share the video with more college football fans. Plus, it only takes a second to do. As always, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you all in my next video.